Hello, Milo. Welcome to a music podcast rewinding from Montenegro. Uh, first, I want to ask you about your recent album you done with Ukulele and what is important. Uh, those are political songs. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we The Descendants don't do a lot of political songs and I, yeah. I, uh, I had these songs that were not only were they political, but they they had to be put out before the election in mm-hmm. our country. And so because uh, because that was happening in November, I, I thought, well, why don't I just put these out myself on ukulele? Um, so that's what came out in October uh, called called Rebuke. Rebuke mm-hmm. was the name of it. Uh, and it was three songs, very political, very topical. And uh, I wanted to get them out before the election, which, you know, I did. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's something that I hope in the future, the descendants aren't going to become a, you know, big political band or, or anything. But I just thought this would be an uh, this would be an opportunity to put these out kind of around the election to kind of, because they re, they reference, they reference the election, so yeah. Right, uh, before uh, descendants, I want to ask you, how you see the America after, an elec- after elections? Well, it's, you know, I, I'm relieved on a certain level. I'm relieved because I felt like um, there was, we were heading in a real, real awful direction. But but I don't think it's, I don't think all, all is well right now. I still think that there's a, a in the aftermath of the election, the person who who was trying to take down the country is still going to try to take down the country. It, he'll just do it not from the presidency, but from some other position of power, uh, you know, as a Twitter guy or whatever. Yeah. And he, you know, Trump obviously has all these followers that will stick with him, I, I guess, even if he's not president. And so we're, I think it's still kind of a, you know, we, we dodged a bullet as a country. I feel like we can try to reconstruct our democratic system or, 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 or I should say bolster, strengthen our democratic system, but it's still gonna be, it's still gonna be uh, under attack yeah. from this point in, in, the, in the foreseeable future, we'll still be under attack. And so I think we still have to kind of, you know, keep 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 these anti-democratic factions uh make them go back underground <laughs> make them go away yeah. i mean that's the whole point of what we do is we the point of the point of our country is to be democratic the point of our country is that everyone has a voice and it's not it's not the kind of oligarchs it's not the uh uh you know it's not one person who's a monarch yeah. uh, that kind of a thing it's you know it, and nothing's ever perfect. I don't. I don't think you know. People talk about us being an oligarchy, oligarchy, anyways. But I think we have to fight against that notion that we are, and try keep trying to keep trying to kind of keep keep democracy at the forefront of everyone's goal in the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I see it in America and anywhere in the world, I I think uh, uh, people now expecting the big changes. Uh, but I think we are all in the some kind of bubble that those changes never come like we expected. It always let us down. Politicians first, and then the, yeah, the, the it, parties. It's hard because we do have this 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 two party system. Yeah. Where you know even the Democrats are not very progressive. I mean that that's that you know they have their progressive wing. But as you can see from this election, we we basically elected a moderate, who who may or may may or may not heed heed the call of of the progressive wing of the party. So I know that there's progressives who are just like, well, this is this isn't what we wanted. And I think my my relief in all this though is that is that the is that the progressive wing of the party were able to see that we need to take this in a stepwise stepwise fashion let's get rid of the fascist Mm -hmm. and then and now we can continue to push for progressive uh, progressive uh 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 uh, goals from this point forward but we had to get rid of that guy he had to be gone so yeah right 
And uh, as we speak about politics and lyrics, uh, that wasn't what descendants are about. Uh, you wrote about girls, rejections, uh, themes that are not typical in punk. Uh, today they are, but when you started, it was all nihilistic, like kind of UK punk and, and stuff. Uh, how that idea came up to go different paths in music and approach the lyrics? We, we've always just, we've always wanted to just write about what we're feeling. You know, it's just about like, you know, what's, what's really just kind of getting us kind of angry or what's, what's getting us kind of frustrated. And so, you know, our songs as a 17 year old, as an 18, 19 year old, we did have, uh, uh, I would say different, different uh, uh, targets for our, for our anger mm -hmm. that maybe are different than they are now. I mean, we were all in high school. And so we had a lot of anger for our kind of high school environment of, you know, just what pe everyone deals with during high school is the, the, the jocks and the, and the, and the popular kids. And we were not the popular kids. So that's mm -hmm. going to become subject for, mm -hmm. for music, you know? Um, and that's no different than what we do now. We're, 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 we just, we always want to try to tap into that, in that anger or that frustration. It's just right now, the anger and frustration for me has, has been more of this political nature where I watched my country just kind of start to crumble mm -hmm. around me uh, and, and, and it, it, or start to go into a dangerous kind of direction. And that's what got me, that's what got me angry enough and frustrated enough to write those songs. But we've, we've never really kind of done what any other band of our of our periods do like you know back when people were shaking their fist at reagan you know fuck reagan or whatever we were like no we're gonna write songs about fishing <laughs> you know and, uh, yeah. that's just that's it's because we don't necessarily want to do what what everyone else is what everyone else is doing or what's popular or you know it would be fake it would be fake if we just were like during reagan if we were like saying oh yeah yeah fuck reagan because we're just more interested. We had all these other uh, kind of, kind of passions that were driving us in a different direction. Mm -hmm. uh, so that what my point in all this is that, you know, six months from now we might be thinking, hey, let's go write some songs about fishing again. I mean, we, you know, I, I don't, I don't necessarily see this as a permanent kind of, kind of uh, detour for us into like writing a bunch of political music. It's just that it, for me, it just happened that way because of the of, as, as I said, the, the, what I felt to be the dire, the dire nature of what we were dealing with in the country. Yeah, and I gotta ask you, I read some arguments on the internet about your lyrics. Uh, some said that they are sexist, others are laughing at it. Uh, how you comment that? I mean, in the band, there are always, uh, there's a people who hate the band and who support the band. How you deal with all that comments and, and perspective? Well, I, again, it's it has to do with our 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 kind of looking in looking within ourselves and, and just kind of bringing out whatever emotions mm -hmm. whatever emotions are really you know get, getting us to getting us to to kind of kind of emote our emote get our feelings out and you know sometimes those emotions aren't aren't necessarily the prettiest of emotions they maybe sometimes they're ugly emotions I mean I hope that we never we don't, we don't, we're not hateful people, but we do, we, you know, especially in, in our teen years, we did have a lot of frustrations against, yeah. uh, you know, things that were around us. And, you know, as you mentioned, we were writing certain songs about uh, the opposite sex that maybe were a little uh, hostile maybe. And so we, you know, we, we've tried to kind of look back on that and see if, if those are songs we still want to play. Maybe, maybe some of them are not. We've, we've dropped songs from our set because we look back and we go, well, that's the voice of a 17 year old. That's a voice of an 18 year old. And do I feel that voice still, you know? Uh, and so we, we kind of, I think we've got, we, we select songs now based upon uh, our, who we are now. Yeah. Um, but it is, you know, we, we've, we've taken our lumps. I can say we've taken our lumps from mm -hmm. people for, for some of those songs. And uh, I don't regret having written them because it really just reflected, it was just a mirror into who I was at that, at that time. A flawed, a flawed teenager who had, I think, had no ability to talk to females that much <laughs> at all. 
you know, as I said, I had I had no game. I had no game to kind of to kind of uh, be that to be that slickster uh, uh, kind of uh, guy with girls, and that came out in the music. And uh, you know, it, it it it's it's we've we've owned up to that because that was just us being you know stupid teenagers. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it, it no one can ever say we weren't being honest. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about honesty. And if 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 being emotionally honest means tapping into and admitting those feelings that's what you're going to get right i i want to uh, i wanted to to say that you are you are honest about your career and uh, how you see uh, your progress during the years you're a different person as you're growing up uh, a lot of people would say no i was smart teenager i was everything was all right but you 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 are arguing with yourself in in, in you know uh, when you're teenager and now yeah, yeah, I, I, I can look back and, and realize and realize that I was in many cases immature. Mm -hmm. um, and then the question is, is does that does that devalue my voice as a songwriter to say that I was immature? I don't you know, I feel like uh, um, I can look back and 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 there are certain songs that I just won't play anymore because because of the, the, like they're just they almost make me cringe that I was so immature as a writer, mm -hmm. as, as a person. But then others, I feel like they do, they do kind of capture a certain teenage immaturity that isn't necessarily coming from a hateful place, but coming from a, a just like I need to, I need to figure this out. I need to, I need to learn, and I need to figure this out, and I need to get out my emotions. And those I feel are are are, are still valid for sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not going to sugarcoat anything we did back then. It's yeah. we we were. Uh, you know, we were teens and we just didn't, didn't have it all worked out, you know? Yeah. And uh, what is stuff with coffee in your ly lyrics? Well, you know, we, we, we started, uh, uh, the band started uh, to play more kind of fast paced music because it made us, it made us excited to play fast. But then you realize, well, if we want to play this fast, this really fast paced music, it's helpful to have, a little bit of a chemical edge mm -hmm. and the chemical edge for us was coffee because uh you know we didn't feel like we wanted to take drugs like real drugs coffee is a drug but it's it's a, yeah. it's a drug that it's a drug that gave us a, ni a nice edge but didn't really you know string us out or anything like that so i think uh we all started uh getting into uh it, 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 drinking tons and tons of coffee and found that we liked the way it, we liked the way it affected our music because it just made us go faster and faster and faster. And it was just right in this period where, you know, we just wanted to be fast. And so that that we, so then the, what then happens though is that as you get older, you kind of go, well, we got to still play fast. We can't slow down. <laughs> and then you just got to drink more and more coffee to kind of keep up, you know, because now it's like, okay, we're really getting old. So now it's, the older you get, the more coffee you have to drink. Uh, and so. Uh, we're still on it, and we still uh, use, we still use it quite a bit. Yeah. With that attitude, uh, could could you be a straight edge band? I don't know if that fits in straight edge world. It. It's it's strange because we we never we never went in for any a lot of the other things like pot or alcohol. Yeah. And that was not our gig, uh, and and in fact, you know, we'd written some songs kind of, you know, we had the song Bikeage where it was kind of like talking about a girl who. Uh, you know, took took too many drugs, and so people thought, "Well, you're a straight edge band." We thought, "No, we're not straight edge. We drink coffee." So no, <laughs> <laughs> if we're real straight edge, we wouldn't drink the coffee either. But uh, yeah. so I think uh, we, we, yeah, we've never really uh, called ourselves straight edge or anything. Uh, and I think the coffee, you know, if you think of coffee just being as another drug, then we're clearly, you know, not not yeah. a straight edge band. And um, I, we, I don't really have any interest in being straight edge versus not. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good with whatever. I'm, my, my whole point in all that was just moderation. It's all about moderation. Uh, and we try to be moderate about our coffee drinking too, but sometimes you kind of overindulge, but you know, I'm okay with moderation. Yeah. And my feeling is uh, that because of your breakups uh, during the years, you managed to gain the cult status, uh, but you didn't catch uh, their glory or become celebrities like some bands that follow your path. Uh, you re remain true punk rockers. 
Well, we just, I think that's, it, there's a, it's a double-edged sword in that, in terms of that, because you're right that, that we, we kind of missed all these, you know, mm -hmm. breakouts of, of the, of the, of the, of the whole genre. Yeah. Uh, but I also feel like we, we also were able to kind of persist through the years and, and, and just, uh, and, and maybe by, and maybe by making it a little more, a little less harder to, for people to see us or make by, by making ourselves scarce that maybe, that maybe it, it did create a certain, uh, uh, a preciousness or certain, um, um, uh, value to what we were doing because we weren't kind of, we weren't basically, uh, you know, pounding ourselves down, down people's throats. We we're saying, you know, if you, if you want to see the descendants, you, you really got to be patient <laughs> basically. <laughs> and we still, we still kind of, you know, treat it that way. It's like, well, we're going to tour as much as it, as it is for us to have, make it be fun. We like to tour when it's fun, but we're mm -hmm. not going to tour 365 days a year. And then it's no longer fun. And the audience at that point gets kind of burned out on us too. It's just like, it's like overkill. So I think uh, w w that's why that's worked out for us in the past. Um, so we'll probably just keep going on that, on that kind of rationale, but you're right. It's, uh, I think uh, it's, it's been, a, it's been a kind of a, I'd say a, an accidental, an accidental type of success for us because we just, you know, we, we kind of made all these judgments in the past about our, about how we were going to tour and that, and, and how we were going to like not, not be together. And then somehow that worked out to our advantage. Somehow it worked out to our advantage. I don't know how, but I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful for the whole way it worked out. Yeah. You managed it. Uh, in 2016, uh, you said that you stopped to pursue your scientific career and to focus only on music. It seems that your inner battle between uh, those two things was long. Yeah, yeah, it's it's something that um, has been with me since I was a teenager, really, because I started getting into biology in my senior year of high school, and that's a that's kind of about when I started getting into punk rock. Um, and the two things just kind of went in parallel with mm -hmm. each other ever since. Um, and I think I've at the very, for the, for many, many years, it was all about that the science was going to be my long-term thing that was going to, you know, sustain me and, and enrich me for my life. And that music was just this hobby that I was doing for fun. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it was only, like you said, in 2016, where I kind of flipped it and said, okay, let's put science aside. Science, science didn't sustain me and it didn't, in, you know, kind of, it didn't really uh, uh, do what it was supposed to do. And then music, music took the, took the front seat. Mm -hmm. And I think I must, I think I must have had it backwards as a, as a kid. I thought, well, I'll do, I'll do the, I'll do the music and this, but the science will be my backup career when the music fails, but then the music never failed. <laughs> it was the science that failed. It was, I had it just backwards. And, and in the end, in the end, the music was the, was the real, was the real focus, should have been the real focus. And the, the science should have been this, this thing on the side. So, yeah. Yeah. But uh, in 2020, we see that science is uh, in front news and music is somewhere in background. Uh, yeah. When I yeah. ask you as a scientist, how you comment all these wires and and uh, how you see the exit from from this status in the world? Well, I mean, obviously, we all need to we all need to uh, a socially distance and wear masks, and eventually we a, we all need to get the, the vaccines when they come through. Mm -hmm. um, I you know I I think the vaccines the vaccines seem to be uh, seem to be effective and they seem to be safe. That's the main message that I want to give. Uh, and, and the thing, the thing that I was really disappointed with though in our country is how uh, the, 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 these, science, these science concepts of wear a mask because it's an airborne virus, mm -hmm. you, you, you pass, it passes through the air, so wear a mask. That became not a science recommendation, but like a political thing of like, no, we won't wear a mask because of politics. And that to me is just such a travesty, such a, such a, such a disaster 
of a, of a thing that had to happen um, because we, we could have saved lots of lives if everyone just wear masks. Um, the other the other thing that was I found really disappointing about how we dealt with it in this country was that we didn't do enough testing early on back in uh, you know March and April. We could have gotten a hold on this uh, by doing a ton more testing and contact tracing. You know, countries like South Korea and Germany at that point were able to crush it. We couldn't crush it because we didn't test enough people to kind of trace it. So I think in terms of my science, my science perspective is that we failed mm -hmm. and, that, and that, you know, and we continue to fail. And it's just really, it's really uh, almost a, tr a joke how, you know, we're supposed to be this technologically advanced society and we just can't, you know, we just, we just blew it. So yeah. uh, my amateur thought was that this kind of stuff would unite people, but I saw that this, this stuff is dividing from all perspectives, you know, yep. the in scientific world, political world, you know, there's always uh, one side who says wear masks, other says you don't do it. And I, I thought we, we should all listen to the science. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's I. It, it, the only thing I can think also is that, uh, you know, you have this this attitude of, and I don't know where this comes from. But this attitude that scientists are elitists, and we and fuck the fuck the elitists, and therefore anything they say, we're not going to listen to it. I mean, you know, if you think about it, it fits in with the same as the climate change, right? I mean, yeah. climate change is something where where you got a whole faction of society who just say we're not going to listen to what you're saying because you're a bunch of elitists and you're you know and we just we're gonna we're gonna believe this fantasy mm -hmm. uh over here rather than believe the science and i think that once you start to have that mindset then then scientists become the enemy yeah and i don't i just to me it's just like what kind of a world are we living in where you know that where, where the scientists are the enemy it just doesn't make sense to me and conspiracy theories. Yeah, that's right. That's the, you, you've done, those are the two categories, right? You got your science, and then you got your conspiracy theory. Yeah. And it's like I just, you know, you've got fifty percent of the country of our country believing conspiracy theories. I, it's really <laughs> scary, really. Yeah. You know? Even people are are still believe that Earth is flat. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I just like. Are you kidding me? That's that's got to be a joke, right? I don't know. It's 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 a, a great amount of people, which is unbelievable. But what yeah. can we do? Uh, what changes do you see over the years in rock and roll world? There's a lot of changes in uh, consuming the music, the formats. Uh, do you think maybe hip hop uh, took over punk and rock and roll? I mean. Uh... I, I guess uh, I guess I haven't I never thought about that way that hip hop took over, but you're right. They're more it's a more popular genre. I I I feel like uh, the main the main uh, the main trend that obviously has been going on for you know many many years now is that bands to to kind of to make a living you have to tour, you can't just kind of make records anymore, and and maybe that's where hip hop has done better because you know hip hop. Can I, people can make money just just making records, but that's not the case in you know rock anymore. You have to kind of mm -hmm. tour, and that's so when I when we when I kind of got back into it for serious in 2016, I realized that you know we, we can continue to make records, um, but really we're gonna we're gonna be able to make a living if we just if we go out and tour. And so it's the focus has been on playing live, um, which of course during the pandemic is not so not so possible yeah. so it's been you know that kind of rationale of well we're you know we're gonna have to play live it, it doesn't work so well uh, this year but i mean i think the, the other thing that come, ends up happening is that is it bands ha, uh, you make a record but the but you, you make music you you produce music in order so that you can then uh so that you can then tour and play your new music but it's you're not going to be the music itself the recorded forms of the music are not making you any money that's just the you know kind of the, the that's you know the streaming the whole streaming platforms and all that make that the case um i mean i don't know i don't i i think that punk rock and you know rock in general will mm -hmm. obviously continue 
and you know hip hop uh, may may continue uh, as as to be like the dominant form but i don't know i i, I kind of feel like there's there's plenty of audience for both both yeah. sides um but yeah i do think that in in the future post pandemic the big question is how much how is touring going to work how are how are shows going to work is it going to be is it going to be something where your your audience capacity per show goes down so bands may have to work a lot harder bands may bands may have to tour may have to go out and tour for a lot longer yeah. because they're having to they're having to play like more and more shows to to, to fewer and fewer people mm -hmm. just to make sure that everyone's safe but who who knows maybe maybe in 10 maybe in 10 months we're going to be looking back on this and going oh that was just a blip on the radar i don't know yeah yeah and for the end, uh, I got to ask you about uh, New Descendants album. I read that uh, this virus inspired you to write some songs. Uh, what can we expect? Yeah, I, I guess I wrote one one pandemic song. <laughs> <laughs> um, mostly I wrote it for my kids and it's mostly kind of an acoustic, kind of an acoustic slower song. It probably, it probably won't end up being a Descendants song just because it's I'd have to rework it so that it's more in the descendant style, but it is more of like an acoustic. It's probably something more that that the that the rebuke that would be good for rebuke, like on a ukulele. Yeah. Maybe, maybe in a, in a in a kind of a toned down format. Um, but yeah, that was my one pandemic song that I wrote. Mm. Um, it's yeah, I'm not getting as inspired by the pandemic to write music yeah. as I was as I was getting inspired by our like I said our political situation. Mm. But uh, no, we, we, we've, we've tracked about 25 songs at this point uh, between Stefan's music, my, my music. Uh, and so that's like, that's two of the four members that have, that have really, uh, you know, contributed quite a bunch of songs. And so now we're waiting for Bill, the drummer and Carl to, mm -hmm. to contribute some songs. So I don't think we're going to have any shortage of songs. We just have to kind of get all four members to kind of, you know, basically demo everything out, and 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 uh, we'll and we'll finish the tracking. But you know, I'm hoping we can probably have a record out by early next year. I think, um, or maybe maybe mid next year. Let's just say mid next year. Mm -hmm. I keep having to push it back, but you know, the music is there. We just have to kind of. Uh, we, have, we just have to kind of get it all into a, like a recorded format. Yeah, that's great to hear. Milo, that's it for this time. Thank you very much for your time. All your best to, your, to you and your family. And I hope to see you in Europe soon. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be over there in the, uh, you know, if, as long as there's no other pandemic wrinkles, mm -hmm. we'll be over there in uh, August on the main continent in in may late may we're actually going to be in uk so uk in may and then in august on the main con in fact we'll be down in uh i think ljubljana mm -hmm. in in august so great close close, to, close yeah. to me yeah yeah hope to see you there all right great thank you very much again all best bye take it easy bye <laughs>